Yo, yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another YouTube video. So real quick, I just wanted to make this intro to explain what's going on in these next clips. I filmed it at like 8.30 at night with my front facing camera on my iPhone in my truck and it's dark and you really can't see me at all. So pretty much what we're doing is we went to go get a new trailer in this video. Uh, scored big, got a great trailer, pretty much brand new. You know me, if you've been watching my videos, I've been talking about getting a new trailer forever so we can start renting my current trailer out, which looks like this. And that's just gonna make us make so much more money because while that one's renting out, making us anywhere from 150 for 24 hours to $200 for 48 hours and so on and so on, that'll just be profit in our pockets. And then we'll have this extra trailer that I just bought to do junk removal with. And my plan is obviously to build it in this video. I already did that because I'm shooting this intro after I've already done all the building, but we build it in this video and I make the build different. So it's not another four by six by 12 foot trailer. I'm actually only doing two foot walls on this one because I never really use the four foot walls. And if I do use the four foot walls, like I'm talking about the, my current trailer, the one with four foot walls on it, I never fill it to the top. And when I do, it's pretty much could have been filled differently where I wouldn't be over the top. And if I fill it that high, I could just use straps to hold it all together. The four foot walls are just unnecessary. It's super expensive. It just weighs the trailer down. It probably adds like an extra 500 pounds of lumber. It's just not feasible for someone trying to start a business like the way I am. The way we framed that up and painted it and all that jazz, that took forever. It costed a lot of money. It was a lot of wood. It's just a lot. So I'm gonna make this second trailer I just bought with only two foot walls and way less framing. Just make it way easier for you guys. If you want to replicate this video, it's gonna be way more affordable and way cheaper. So that's the plan in today's video. I hope you guys enjoy. And if you do, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys then. Peace. All right, I'm making a big impulsive decision right now. It's like 8.45 at night and I'm going to buy this six by 12 foot trailer, landscaping trailer, just like the one I already have, but obviously not built up with the big walls on it. And you're probably wondering, Ty, why aren't you buying a dump trailer? You've been talking about that. It's because I can't find a truck that I want yet and I'm still using the old V6 beater so that means I can't call a dump trailer yet and I just seen this deal on this landscaping trailer sorry if it's dark in here but seeing this landscaping trailer 2021 triple crown that he said he's used two times and it looked like it from the pictures for 1500 bucks I know that's not a steal but it's a good deal especially for on the marketplace in my area recently everything's going like that so and I could use another trailer just so I could rent mine out on the weekends and stuff like that and not have to worry about not being able to take jobs and stuff like that. I just want another trailer. Just wanted to update you guys and bring you along with this little impulsive decision journey I'm making. Let's get this trailer. Yeah, so uh, that trailer we were talking about yesterday, uh, I bought it and it's super nice. Paid 1500 bucks for it, about to show you guys. And I think I'm gonna build it into a smaller version of the trailer I already have now and specifically use it for junk removal. Usually never fill up the one I use now, the four foot or the four foot walls ones over there. And it's just so much extra weight and lumber I used to build that thing and I never used all of it. So I think I'm gonna rent that one out for dumpster rentals and then just build this one up with only two foot walls and specifically use it for junk removal. And then when I get bigger jobs where I think, oh, maybe I'm gonna overfill it, I'll use that one. And if that one's rented out, I'll either try to use this one and just use the back of my truck too, or just wait till it's not rented out anymore and plan on not running out and using it for that job. But I figured why not build a different kind of trailer and have a variety of trailers, like flip flop back and forth between them and just try something different. So, but let me show you guys this trailer, it's sick. So it is, uh, sorry, I'm parked right up on it. So my dad can park next to me, but 2021 Triple Crown um, thing is mint condition. I mean, look at the tread on the tires, original tires. <laughs> The guy told me he got bought it for uh, bringing his ATV to the track and he used it twice. I mean, I don't know where the thing is on the bottom. See, it's just like a pole, but you have to get that fixed. Literally all the lights work, blinkers work. The gate's a little bit different than my other one. I guess they changed it up on the 2021. See how it's uh, what looks uh, like that and then this one. But this one on my other trailer is like this. So see, there's like a rail on the top and this netting's like under this. On the other one, it's not. But yeah, we got a pretty good deal on this. $1,500 for a trailer that's been used twice and 2021. So that's lit. So now I got to go to Home Depot, get some lumber and start trying to build this thing. I'm going to build it up literally just like that one, but 
instead of four foot walls two foot walls and that's going to save me a ton of money and time and it's going to make it lighter and easier to pull and like i said if i do need a bigger trailer i'll just use that one and if it's rented out at the time i'll wait till it's not rented out and just schedule the job out two days later so that's the plan now i get to show you guys how to build junk removal trailer with two foot walls so it's also more content for the channel <sighs> all right what are we going with i definitely whoa these are expensive 5360 holy oh, that's too thick this is too thin hmm what is this 85 dollars a sheet oh wait huh lumber prices have gone down a lot Ooh, no 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 Huh. This might be the one I'm getting. All right, we just finished up at Home Depot. Got the plywood, got the gallon of paint that I'm gonna use to make it weatherproof. We spent $89.54. Not bad, but I didn't have to buy screws because I still have screws left over from my last trailer build. And I think I have a few two by fours laying around and I'm probably only gonna need like two two by fours because I'm not gonna put that much support because like I said the walls are only coming up two feet so I'm gonna be able to screw them into the railing like every 20 inches or so so it's just gonna be like really sturdy even without two by fours but yeah we got the wood I'm gonna bring it home it looks like it's about to pour so I don't think I'm gonna be able to paint today but hopefully we get paint started on painting tomorrow <sighs> all right you guys know the drill back to painting All right, so I'm not gonna bore you guys to death with painting. If you don't know how to paint, this isn't a painting tutorial, but I'm just gonna paint all these. Then I gotta paint the uh, support beams. I got just these little, I don't know even what they are. I think they're like three by three by ones. I'll measure them in a little bit and tell you what exactly they are. Just cause I don't wanna do two by fours like I did in my other trailer back there. It doesn't need all that extra support. I think I'm just gonna run these little three by ones down the rails cause they're 12 foot long, just for a little bit extra support. So the uh, the plywood doesn't bow after it gets rained on a few times and stuff. And sorry, I got my shirt off if that's bothering you. Literally, I have the worst farmer's tan from working outside all the time in junk removal and I wear a regular shirt. So I have a terrible farmer's tan. And now's the perfect opportunity. The sun's beating down, I'm in my own backyard. So I was like, ah, eh, what the heck, let's get some sun and try to get rid of my farmer's hand. So that's why I got my shirt off if you're wondering. But yeah, I'm gonna paint this out. I already showed you guys a little clip of that. Then we'll do those. Let them dry over the weekend and then probably get this thing finished Monday. And then I actually have a crazy job scheduled Tuesday, but that's gonna be in a separate video. Throw the notifications on for that because it's my biggest job yet. But let's get after it. Wow, I am drenched. Second one done. Other one's drying on the trailer. I gotta go go do a job, so I just like got the rest of the paint out of the paint pan and just put it on those real quick. And now I'm gonna wait for these to dry, then move them in the garage and do those little three by ones, probably Sunday or something real quick, cause those aren't gonna take long at all. And then get this thing built Monday. So that's the plan. And I will see you guys probably Monday. All right, so this part, I'm just gonna voice over real quick. Uh, as you can see, we already cut the plywood. I forgot to record this part because my dad got excited and jumped on the build without me even being there. But when I got here, he had the two four by eight foot pieces of plywood already all ripped down the middle. All we pretty much did was just cut them right down the middle because two four by eight foot pieces of plywood is just enough to go around the whole trailer because it's six by 12 foot, so it fits perfectly. But honestly, it was a little bit too long just because it was inside the frame. It was like almost hitting the back gate and we wanted a little bit clearance just to be able to hook the gate on. It was like a few inches too long. So as you can see here, we're cutting those few inches off and we just popped some lines and I'm letting dad do it obviously because he's way better at this kind of stuff. And if I did this by myself, I probably wouldn't even have thought about popping lines. Probably would have just guessed. <laughs> and once we got everything cut, we set it up and then we tacked it. And then now you can see me putting two by fours in the front corners just to make everything a little bit more stable and we can screw right into those. Once we did that, we went around the whole trailer and just used one inch Tapcon. I don't, actually, I don't even think they're called Tapcons. Um, Self-tapping screws, that's what they're called. And we screwed from the inside out into the trailer railing post all the way around the trailer, just did it on every post. And it made it super sturdy. 
these are the screws if you're looking for the kind of screws that I used one by 7 16 inch and they fasten wood to metal you have to go from wood to metal because it bites on the metal you couldn't do it the other way around it just wouldn't work this is the finished product once you got everything screwed in you can see those front two by fours holding in nice that really makes the front joints really strong and then that top piece if you're wondering what it is uh, that was my dad's idea. He just got a one by four inch piece of wood and put it on the top rail all the way around the trailer just to make sure the plywood doesn't start bowing after a few times, stuff like that. It's just going to make it a little bit stronger and not make it bow as easily because as you know, when plywood gets weathered, it just tends to bow, especially when it's in super long strips like this. And this holds the joints together because obviously they're eight foot, so we had to rip them in half and then just combine them. But in my opinion, it came out really good, really simple build. It was way easier than that build, the, uh, my other trailer, way more affordable and way more beginner friendly. So, All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I probably rushed the build a little bit because I was trying to give my dad a hand and build it at the same time. But I hope you got my point. It was pretty self-explanatory. We just got two pieces from Home Depot of four by eight foot plywood and the thickness of the plywood was five eighths inch thick. So pretty thick plywood. Originally I got different boards, but my dad was like, let's go back. Uh, you return these with a the receipt and we'll get different plywood because he wanted to be a little bit thicker. And like I always tell you guys, I always listen to him because he's the contractor. And the reason he wanted to get it thicker is just so it doesn't bow over time. And he's right, because the stuff that I bought before, I just had it sitting in the garage for like a day, and it was already bowing, just sitting in the garage on the floor, just leaning against the wall. So it was probably a good thing when we went back and got that thicker plywood. And then we just stripped it completely down the middle, both pieces, and then we just laid it around the trailer and buttered it all together, and then started screwing it into the railings from the inside out with those screws i put in the video that was pretty much it everything went together good and then you saw me put the two by fours in the front corners that was just really to make the front corner joint stronger just screwed from the outside into those two by fours and then the top piece that strip that was running all the way around the perimeter of the trailer on the outside that was just a one by four 12 foot so that was the perfect length we didn't even have to really cut it we got three pieces of those one by four and they were 12 foot long so one of them we just had to cut in half. So we have an extra piece, a six foot piece laying around. That worked out well. That wasn't even in my blueprint for the build, but my dad thought it was a good idea. And like I said, he knows better than me. So we just threw that on just so the plywood doesn't start bowing over time, like super quick, it'll hold it together. And since we had to connect two pieces of plywood, cause the plywood's eight foot long. So the longest piece was eight foot, then the back piece that's right before the gate was four. That adds up to 12 and we had to connect those somehow. So that piece connected on perfectly. And yeah, that's the build. I hope it wasn't too confusing for you guys. I think it came out great. I think it's gonna get the job done. I never, like I said, I never really filled my four foot walled trailer to the top. That one's 10 yards. So that means this one's completely just like cut in half. So this one's a five yard. And I think it's just gonna be a little bit more feasible. It was a lot easier to build, way cheaper. I spent right around $125. I calculated it but I saved money on those screws because I used the same screws I used in my last build and I had that extra two by four laying around. So the receipt from Home Depot was like $97 and some change for the wood that I bought. And the only money I saved was on the screws and those were like $13 screws. And then that one two by four that I had in my garage, two by fours, I think are like eight bucks right now or something like that, the eight foot long ones. So I probably saved like 20 bucks on the build from materials I already had. So realistically, the build cost right around $120. And if you wanna mock this build up and do it for your own junk removal or pressure washing or landscaping service or whatever you're doing, go ahead. Cause in my opinion, I think it came out great. But yeah, that's all I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button for me. Comment below if I skipped over something or forgot to mention something. I usually do that. So if I did, just drop a comment. I'll try to answer it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.